Round two, fight. No, we're not actually playing a fighting game today. We're doing part two of the shmup extravaganza. Starting out with Roga Armor Force, a fantastic shmup made by none other than Data East. This game previously did not run properly due to encryption issues that prevented you from getting even past the main title screen. A couple months ago, I showcased this game in action and I did a very spontaneous Stan Bush impression, which I'm gonna have to repeat today, of course. And the very, very first time I ever played this game, I was absolutely blown away by the epic soundtrack that reminded me quite a bit of the first time I saw Top Gun in the theater and heard that incredible, incredible, mind-blowing epic soundtrack with Kenny Loggins doing Highway to the Danger Zone. But in any case, we're going to have to do a Stan Bush mode activate here. Because there's no going back, guys and gals. This is just a phenomenal, epic soundtrack that demands singing, dancing, or playing of the drums, too. So here we go, Stan Bush mode, activate! You've got the power to fight the guys Take them out if he wants to survive you gotta be stronger if you wanna live longer. Cue in the drum. Game over. Guess we're gonna have to move on to the next schmuck in the lineup, of course. But uh, Roga Armor Force is an incredible, incredible Data East shmup that demands being played. And of course it has a two player mode which makes every game better. We're moving on to the next game in this list. We're gonna check out Star Soldier Vanishing Earth for the Nintendo 64. I mean, everybody knows about their Gradius and their R-Types, but not everybody knows about the incredible legacy that the Star Soldier series has. And, TurboGrafx-16 alone had quite a few of these games. But everybody's playing Mario 64, Mario Kart, Wave Race, and so on. This game just completely slipped through the cracks, waiting in the corner with a buttload of other exceptional Nintendo 64 games that demanded being played. <laughs> Mission. But shmup fans out there, especially ones that like the Star Soldier series, are really going to like this. And I love the polygon style graphics for this shmup. I mean, that's awesome. Good 3D effect going on here. And it holds up really well over time. And we got a quite, quite a few more shops to go through today. And of course, I'm gonna end up having to do a part three, a part four, and so on. I mean, even though shmups are such a niche genre, there's several hundred of these out there floating about. I'm really loving this game. I'm gonna be coming back to it. But this is Star Soldier Vanishing Earth for the Nintendo 64. And speaking of Nintendo 64, in my previous video I started out with Radiant Silver Gun. They made this game as well called Sumi Tubatsu Hoshi no Keishushi. Or Kushi. <laughs> I'm bad at pronunciation here. But this is none other than uh, Sin and Punishment. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the foreign trailers for King Kong. I love when they do that accented King of Konga style thing. It's just incredibly awesome. Look up a uh, King Kong foreign trailer and you'll see exactly what I mean. It's awesome. But Sin and Punishment is awesome. I love Treasure. They made Ikaruga, Alien Soldier, Radiant Silver Gun, Gunstar Heroes, Mish Chief Makers, which is also known as UQ Troublemakers. And a couple of the team members originally made the original Contra. I mean, Treasure is awesome. 
And of course they made a great, great reboot of this on the Wii. I downloaded that game and I played the hell out of it. I love it. But this runs really, really nicely on the Gloopin core. And what you're seeing right now is one of the new wallpapers I added to the core set. And you can watch my wallpaper video to see how, how to choose this, but it is in the latest core set. But this is an impeccable game and it runs phenomenally well on the Gloopin core. I love on rail shooters, everything from Panzer Dragoon to this to Elemental Gearboat. And of course games like Operation Wolf. Why did we not get this game in the United States where I hail from? I mean, this would have been the, one of the best possible Nintendo 64 games to have over here. But everything from the enemy design to the graphics, the music, sound effects, it's just an impeccable production. Big, big props to Treasure. They did awesome here. Let's see what else we have to play today. We're going to be going through some underrated shmup games that were uh, not really well known on NES. And here's an unreleased in the United States. This was uh, overseas only in Japan and such called Crisis Force. And you're going to know exactly which company made this the moment I paused the game. But it is a truly epic... Well, there you go. It, sh it shows it right there. Konami. But it wasn't released in the United States. I really, really wish it would have been because it is an awesome, awesome game. Come on, they made Life Force. Why couldn't they release this too? Got your typical sound effects, music, graphics scheme that your typical Konami game would have. A lot of great action going on, on the screen at once with not even a hint of slowdown. That's one of the common denominators I'm seeing with quite a few of these uh, shmups that weren't released over here where I live. They don't have the on-screen slowdown that a game like Gradius would have. And when the NES Classic first came out, this is one of the games that did not work with the Catchy Catchy emulator. We had to run F-C-E-U-M-M and or Nystopia to run this game. It just simply does not run on Catchy Catchy. But this is Crisis Force, and it is an awesome game. I'm loving the scrolling effect that's going on right now. This is awesome. Definitely ahead of its time for the time frame that it was released. But we got two more of these uh, awesome, awesome, unreleased in the United States shmup games to showcase. We got Crisis Force, which I just showed. Another one is called Over Horizon. Equally, equally awesome here. And that is uh, the general idea here with some of these shmup videos. I'm trying to showcase some of the games that aren't as well known, but of course I'm going to throw some well known ones in to the mix. But one thing I love from the get go is the fact that you can shoot from behind and in front. This makes it a lot easier to take out enemies. You play a game like Radius, you kind of have to manipulate your your uh, spaceship on the screen to be able to shoot behind you and in front of you. You have to have an enemy in front of you at all times. Really, really well done game here. Great graphics, music, visual style. And I can shoot in front of me and behind me. This music kind of reminds me a little bit of the ice stage in uh, Blaster Master. Really, really cool game here. And I'm kind of wondering if either of these ever showed up in an issue of Nintendo Power. Maybe they were like uh, coming soon and they just simply didn't release them. But we have one more here called Summer Carnival 92 Rekka. And there are quite a few of these uh, Summer Carnival games. Some of them were on the TurboGrafx and TurboGrafx CD. And next, it's soft cannot go wrong with shmup games. And yes, this game was actually used in a tournament. You have a score attack and a time attack mode, as well as the normal game. And this game is ahead of its time. There's just so much on-street action going on, 
and barely a hint of slowdown. I mean, this is bull in hell, shmup before it's time. It's like playing Galaga on crack and speed at the same time. <laughs> just look at all this frenetic action going on screen at once. It's just incredible to see. So these last three shmups that I showed, this Crisis Force and Over Horizon are just awesome. And you can see this is no easy game. It's not a pushover at all. It's just, it truly is a competitive style game for a tournament. But if you love your bullet hell shooters, you're gonna be right at home with this game. Now I'm getting annihilated from the get-go here, but that was Summer Carnival 92 Rekka. I highly recommend all three of these games. And speaking of Nintendo Power, you know how every month they would showcase a particular game on the front cover? This is one of those games that was plastered on the front cover, but it did not sell very well. It just never really took off like a game like Mega Man 2 or Mario 3 took off, but it's an excellent hybrid of many different genres such as Shmup and side scrolling like Ninja Gaiden. It's a, a true gem of a game worth playing. And look at this. Ironically, it says look at this on the screen, but it's a lot like Ninja Gaiden as far as the menu screens are here. Cinema screen, should I say. It starts out like a shmup. And I love these uh, genre mashing games such as BioBilly. You know, Adventures of BioBilly and this, where even in BioBilly you'd have your typical side scroll at Double Dragon style stage. And then you'd have your light gun stage like Operation Wolf. And then you'd have your driving stage like Rad Racer. Here we have our Spy Hunter style shmup stage, which is awesome. And I did not initially own this game when it first came out, but I bought it used from Video Game Exchange much later on. And it is truly a game to appreciate. And of course, it showed up in the top 20 list of Nintendo Power a few times, but like I said, it really did not sell that well overall. Everybody else was playing their Mega Man 2, their Zelda games, and Contra games, etc. This game was just not played. So we got games like this and Shatterhand, which kind of slipped between the cracks, but they were awesome games in their own right. We'll at least get to the second stage so you can see what I'm talking about from the Ninja Gaiden perspective here. And we're on to stage two into a Ninja Gaiden style stage. And again, I love any type of hybrid, hybrid game that you can come across. I love when they mix different genres together. Victor K did that with uh, Gogo 13 as well where they had the 3D shooting stages and of course the helicopter shooting stages later on. But here we go, we get our side scrolling ninja Gaiden style stage and it has awesome graphics. A lot like a Batman style game too. Shatterhand, Ninja Gaiden, all that good stuff all rolled into one. And of course, phenomenal music. And cue in the next game. See what else we have to display here for part two. We're gonna actually play another. NEC is the company behind Turbo Graphics 16 and Turbo Graphics CD, but they also made the PC 98 and the PC FX. We're gonna try out a shmup on the PC 98, which is a personal computer release back then, called Last Breakers, and this is a really really cool shmup game. You don't always have to play your main core system such as NES or SNES or Mega Drive Sega Genesis. You can get some of the obscure shmup gems on systems like the PC-98. And of course I love any game that has a playable ninja as a character. And I'm running this with the Nico Project which is MP2 in my core set. You can also run this with MP2 Kai. And I'm going to restart real quick because I bumped the, the cat bumped the keyboard and messed it up. Actually, I'll just exit and reload. We'll get out of this little thing. My cat really needs to stop bumping my keyboard here. Q 
skewing the awesomeness of a PC-98 game. And I'll be getting more into PC-98 in the near future. There's just quite a few exceptional games on this computer. Okay, we're in the game now. The cat didn't bump the keyboard this time. And I must pick my ninja character. Ninja! Really, really cool shmup on a lesser known computer. And of course, this computer was pretty much the top dog until IBM came out. IBM is the one that dethroned this computer back in the day. But the Sharp 68000 and the PC-98 are both two computer systems that definitely check out with the core set in my cores. Really well done game here. Awesome, awesome. And it's two player as well. I mean, I'm loving these two player shmup games. We're going to be moving on to some more games here. And we got Gate of Thunder. I mean, one of the best Turbo Graphics CD games ever made. I mean, when you're talking about epic soundtracks, you have three games on Turbo Graphics CD that really, really stand out Dracula X, Rondo of Blood, Gate of Thunder, and Lords of Thunder. Even though Lords of Thunder is also on Sega CD, the soundtrack is not quite as good as the Turbo Graphics CD version. Truly, truly jamming soundtrack here. Has a hint of Steve Vai and Amy Mouse theme. Some awesomeness here. I'm gonna stop shooting so you can hear the soundtrack just a little bit better. It's an absolute shame that the Turbo Graphics CD didn't do as well as it did. I mean, it's a system that mainly had a lot of Japanese oriented style games and those did not do as well over here. I mean, this system was out at the same time as Super Nintendo and PlayStation 1 and it just didn't do as well. But here we have Lords of Thunder, the companion piece to the Great Gate of Thunder. And I absolutely love this game. It has a mythological theme to it, along with this epic, epic guitar soundtrack. I mean, right from the get-go, this is just incredibly awesome. I mean, you cannot go wrong with the soundtrack. It's awesome. And they did eventually release this on the Wii as a downloadable title, but I mean, come on. What's not to love about this epic shmup of a game with one of the best soundtracks you could ever hear in a shmup game? We're talking top tier right now. It is not an easy game. This is an incredibly difficult game. One 
one thing TurboGrafx CD and Sega CD had were no shortage of epic soundtracks. I mean, even the worst games, even like Adam's Family on TurboGrafx CD had a great soundtrack. And we're doing yet another, this is actually the Japanese version of TurboGrafx CD, a PCE CD called Ginga Fuke Densato Sapphire. It's actually one of the best shmups you could ever play. When I talk about my favorite shmups of all time, I talk about Ikaruga, Radiant Silver Gun, and Sapphire. These are three of my top favorite shmups of all time here. And originally when I emulated this game many, many years ago, it had issues due to the system cards. The BIOS caused the problem with the game and it would freeze. But I actually imported this and owned it on a real TurboGrafx Duo, which was awesome. So I owned the real game. But out of the Japanese only shmups, this is the best of the bunch as far as I'm concerned. For Turbo Graphic CD slash PCE CD. <laughs> Really, really cool game, and it never ever gets old. And yet another epic jamming TurboGrafx CD soundtrack going on for it. Now we got a few more games to showcase here, but again, the name of this game, and I'll show you the complete title here. I just call it Sapphire for short. It was Ginga Fuke Densetsu Sapphire. Now we're going to try out this very, very weird TurboGrafx CD, and it's uh, PCE. PCE, of course, is the Japanese version of the TurboGrafx CD. Should I say TurboGrafx 16? And there were literally 66% more games for both the TurboGrafx CD and the TurboGrafx 16 in Japan than there were in the United States. But this is one truly twisted game, and right from the get-go, you got this kid coming in to use the bathroom, and weirdness ensues. It's a little bit like a Twin B-style shmup, but it's actually cool for what it is once you see it in action. What's going on here, WTF? Okay. And that is a true WTF moment here. A <laughs> very, very strange game. There's no shortage of weird Japanese games, but they're fun to play. <laughs> this has a really, really cool soundtrack considering uh, it was on the TurboGrafx-16. And if you notice, the TurboGrafx-16 had quite an extensive color palette. There's way more color going on the screen than in your typical NES game. That's kind of funny. You got flies on the screen, poop on the screen. I mean, who came up with this game? What kind of boardroom meeting, boardroom meeting had this game as a concept? And here we have another other incredible game, also known as Gunhead in the arcade, called Blazing Lasers, which is on TurboGrafx-16. And I really, really, really wanted the system when it first came out, but it was just so it's expensive. Luckily, uh, when I worked at a video game store, somebody came in and traded in their Turbo Duel, and I got a box load of games as well as the TurboGrafx CD and TurboGrafx 16 combo system. And I got Godzilla CD, I got Dracula X, Rondo of Blood. I mean, I literally had 40 Who cards 
and 20 CD games. It was awesome. And I spent a whole 60 American dollars for it. But on the TurboGrafx-16 itself, this is my favorite shmup. On the, the Who cards, should I say. If you want a game that's a little bit like Life Force, this is the game to play on the TurboGrafx-16. And again, this is called Blazing Lasers. It's also known as Gunhead in the arcade. Loving, loving the soundtrack here. Uh, but of course, we gotta move on to some more shmups. I mean, there's more, more, more shmups to showcase here. And speaking of Taito, they made an awesome, awesome game called Raystorm. We're talking about Irem, Taito, and of course, Dades. They all make incredible shmups. Amongst many other companies like Cave. But one of the things that was really awesome as a gimmick in this game was the ability to use a targeting system. Other games that used a targeting system similar to this were Panzer Dragoon, of course, Ele Elemental Gear Boat for PlayStation 1, and of course Afterburner Climax, which came out as a reboot of the original Afterburner game on the PlayStation Network. And this game does not run well on any of the arcade cores. It runs best on PlayStation 1. I'm using the PCSX Rion core. But I absolutely love the targeting system. Here. Nearly any game that I've ever played in the history of games oh. that, game that has had a targeting system I've been a fan of. You can line up all the enemies at once and take them all out with one shot. Look at that, that is awesome. There are actually three games in this series. Ray Storm, Ray Force, and Ray Crisis. It's a shame this doesn't run well in the arcade cores. I mean, it, it runs so much better on PlayStation 1. But this game right here is yet one of my other favorite shmups. I mean, I have 10 specific shmups that are my absolute favorites, and I showed you a couple of those today. This is one of them. I played this game probably more than any other game aside from Radiant Silver Gun and Ikaruga. But uh, speaking of uh, a magic which I showcased in my last video with Cosmic Arc, they made this incredible game called Atlantis, which was also on the Atari 2600. And there's a mind blowing moment that when I first connected this my PC to a, a sound system a good decade ago, there's a sound effect in this game that just blew my mind. It entirely shook my entire room. You'll see it in action in a couple minutes here. There's a specific enemy that comes on the screen and the sound effect it triggers when you blow it up just has so much bass reverberation that it can shake your entire house or room. It is funny to behold. You'll see it, it'll happen. It's a little itty bitty enemy that comes across the screen blazing fast. Come on now, where are ya? There it is. Yeah, you have your base up, your entire house is gonna shake. It's awesome. But uh, that is one of their three awesome games on the Atari 2600. One of their other ones is right here called Demon Attack. When you talk about a Magic and Atari 2600, most people 
remember, Demon Attack is their favorite magic game. And sadly, a magic as a company did not last very long. They made some incredible shmup games, and then they kind of fell off the face of the planet. So I'm really, really hoping some of the key components of the company are now working for big companies such as Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, and so on, because they really deservedly should still be in the industry. And on a final note, before this video concludes, my very, very first game had this Stan Bush mode activate. I'm going to have to do something similar to that as our tail end game here. We're going to play this crazy, crazy PlayStation 1 game. Let me get to it here. Code 70s Robot Anime Gepi Axe The Super Boosted Armor. Say that three times real fast without twisting your tongue. But if you want a game that's a true experience, this game is it. Let's get into the fray the action and do a second stand bush mode activate Japanese style. Perfect fit and end into this video. This is actually a four disc set. I mean, it's incredibly big. Nearly two gigs in size. But check it out. Stan Bush mode. Activate Japanese style. Yes, this was actually on PlayStation 1. I would easily say this is one of the most inspired shmups that I've ever had the pleasure of playing. It's just awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video and there will be a part three. I hope you enjoyed the 70s robot anime game I am playing right now. Oh, Gappy. I'll show you.